Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My first love turned into a nightmare when she ruined my reputation. Now I'm struggling to heal and trust again. Back in 2023, when I was 19 I started dating this girl, B, who was 18 at the time. We were together for about a month, and man, it was a roller coaster. To keep things chill, I'll just refer to her as B now. B had a seriously rough childhood if you can even call it that. Her dad was abusive and bailed on her mom when they needed him most. Plus, he cheated. Then her mom started traveling all over the country every couple of weeks with different dudes, leaving B and her sister alone for long stretches. Not exactly a picture-perfect family, you know? So last April, I was part of this group that went to perform in a big city. While we were there, B, who was a classmate I'd gotten pretty close to and I confessed we had feelings for each other. Later that week, after this fancy dinner, she straight up asked me if I wanted to be her boyfriend. Honestly, I hadn't really thought about getting into a relationship, but I wasn't against it either. Since COVID hit in 2020, I'd been in a dark place mentally, struggling to find purpose. Watching all my friends pair up while I was still solo didn't help. Anyway, before I said yes to B, I wanted to set some expectations. See, I come from a hardcore Christian family, and those values are important to me. I told her I wasn't down with premarital sex and that communication and honesty were super important I'd seen too many relationships crash because of lies or people not talking things out. She was totally on board and said she'd recently become a Christian too, and waiting until marriage was cool with her. So we made it official. After our performance the next night, we went to the ceremony for everyone who performed. B and I enjoyed some amazing food, and after we wrapped up, we headed back to the hotel. Her roommates were still at the dinner when we got back to her room. We were with a big group and split up by gender, so we sat and chatted for a while. We were both geeking out about being part of such a high-class performance and, well, being a new couple. A few minutes later, sitting side by side on the edge of the bed, we started making out. Looking back, that was probably the first in a series of mistakes I made. I'm not saying I'm blameless here, I know I messed up. When we got back home, we kept hanging out almost every day, which wasn't hard since we went to the same college and had the same major. I'd ask her if she wanted anything for lunch or dinner, and she'd always hit me with the I'm not hungry, it doesn't matter or you pick lines. Oh, and side note, we're both a bit on the spectrum slightly autistic so neither of us is great at picking up social cues. There were plenty of times I'd try to get close to her like give her a hug or a forehead kiss, but she'd push me away. She'd say she was overstimulated, or it wasn't the right time or place, or she was just too tired. That hurt, man. All I wanted was to give her a safe space, you know? We spent a lot of late nights together, making out and talking about our plans whether it was for the next day or way down the line. Eventually, my parents called me out for being out so late all the time. I told them we were just making out and chatting. They warned me to be careful not to compromise my morals, saying I was on a slippery slope. At first, I kind of brushed them off and kept hanging out with B as much as possible. But I did tell her directly, that if I ever said or did anything that made her uncomfortable she should let me know. I'm terrible at reading social cues and body language the last thing I wanted was to hurt her or make her feel controlled. She acknowledged this and said she didn't see me as controlling at all. A few weeks into dating, things escalated. We both let it go further than we should have and ended up touching each other in pretty intimate ways. Just to be clear, we never took our clothes off. The most I ever saw was her in a bathing suit when we went swimming one day. After I got home and thought about it, I realized things were moving way too fast. I should also mention that when we'd go on walks or hikes we'd trade sexual jokes. When we were alone, sitting close, I'd usually have my arm around her shoulders and she'd grab my hand and move it toward her chest. At first I wasn't comfortable with that and pulled back, but after a while I just let her do it. But after some reflection, I knew we needed to pump the brakes, so I didn't try to touch her like that again. Despite trying to slow things down, it was tough. B was my first real relationship, and let's be real I was and still am a hormone-driven teenage guy. Biology, right? Not an excuse, but it definitely messes with your decision-making. One weekend, I decided to take B for a drive so we could just talk. We cruised around for almost three hours, chatting about everything our future plans together, how things were going, stuff we noticed about each other. I brought up that we both had insecurities that affected our behavior. I didn't get into specifics at the time, but looking back, here's the deal. On my end, I was super clingy. Probably comes from not having many friends growing up and always feeling like the odd one out. So when someone did befriend me, I'd hold on tight, which, ironically, pushed people away. As for B, she'd constantly ask if I was going to leave her or say things like, you're sick of me if I didn't respond to a text right away even if I was busy. She'd make little comments like how she didn't deserve me or how she'd broken me. She'd also brush me off when I was worried about her well-being. She had this habit of not eating or sleeping for long periods and getting hurt from walking on sketchy stuff like rusty metal or jagged rocks. A week after that drive, B calls me in the middle of the night and says she wants to break up. Just like that. No explanation. Naturally, I was wrecked. I asked if I'd done something wrong and if we could talk about it the next day, but she just blew me off. I told her I hoped we could still be friends despite everything. She brushed that off too. A week later, she texts me saying she doesn't want to stay in contact and that we should go our separate ways. I was crushed but told her 
if that's what she wanted, and it made her happy, I'd accept it. No sooner had I sent that text than I hopped on Facebook to unfriend her per her wishes, only to find she'd already blocked me on every platform. Fast forward about a month, and I get a message from a mutual friend. Apparently after B dumped me and cut me off, she started telling all our classmates and mutual friends that I tried to assault her. That couldn't be further from the truth. The message included a screenshot of a group chat with several peers I considered friends, including one guy I thought was a really good friend. In the chat, they were calling me all sorts of nasty things, making threats against me, and even plotting to get me kicked out of college. Deep down, I knew they had nothing on me besides B's word and her little crew. I reached out to a couple of people in the chat who I thought were close friends, but they either ignored me or blew me off. At that point, I decided to ghost from social media. I deactivated my Facebook and Instagram after clearing out my friend lists, keeping only about seven close family members and friends, and I deleted Snapchat. I was super hesitant about going back to college, afraid people would come at me without even hearing my side. Oh, and guess who else was still at the same college? Yep, B, when I saw her, I tried asking what happened and why she'd make such horrible accusations. She said she didn't want to talk about it and pretty much ignored me the whole semester. Halfway through, we got this opportunity to perform at a concert, and B was part of the group along with most of the people who had threatened me. While at the concert, I ended up talking to the guy who started the group chat trashing me. At first I gave him the cold shoulder I was still angry and hurt, but eventually, I decided to talk to him for some closure. He apologized for his actions and said that after he spread all that stuff, a lot of our mutual friends called him out for jumping the gun. He said once he found out B had lied and made up the allegations, he cut her off and also dipped out from social media. A few weeks after the concert, B approached me out of nowhere and started talking about how her trauma made her cut me off and not confront me, among other things. Look, I get that trauma is brutal and can cause deep-seated issues, but it's not cool to hide behind it every time you make bad choices. And because of her lies and the threats against me, I don't trust anyone anymore. I've got two friends and my parents who helped me through it, but I'm not opening up to anyone else anytime soon. After she tried to explain herself, I didn't say much besides, okay thanks and went about my business. I'd taken on a bunch of responsibilities around campus to keep myself busy and my mind off things. Later, I wrote her a letter saying, while I understand that trauma is tough to deal with, it doesn't excuse the lies you told. I know I made mistakes, and I'm willing to admit that, but I'm not taking all the blame because you've got your faults too. You lied and tried to ruin my life, and you shattered my heart and trust. I'm willing to be civil, but I don't see us being friends anytime soon. I handed her the letter and she walked off to read it. Later she came back and just nodded, acknowledging she'd read it. Then it was back to radio silence, which honestly was fine by me. Throughout this whole mess, I've cycled through sadness and depression to anger and hatred, and now I'm somewhere between anger and indifference. Part of why I'm sharing this is because I'm still wrestling with it. My friends tell me it'll take time to heal, while my parents are like just get over it and move on I'm stuck. I want to move on but I don't know how. I still feel like I deserve an explanation for why she spread such awful lies about me. If anyone's got advice on how to handle this kind of thing, I'd really appreciate it because I'm at a loss here. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.